Over the years, urchin harvesting itself has changed a lot, especially when it comes to safety and professionalism. Nowadays, you have to be certified to be an underwater harvester for sea urchin on scuba. There's a special three-month course for that. You also have to have medical, you know, you have to have your equipment checked regularly. There's a whole list of rules and regulations. Before I was doing other commercial dive work and then uh, I knew a, a friend that was doing the harvesting. He just told me a lot of stories and I thought it sounded really fun so he gave me a bunch of numbers and he just put your name out there and eventually uh, I started in Victoria which is kind of the ultimate place to start because you're in and out of town. They knew they had a lot of patience with me but if they had to get rid of me it would be easy you know. <laughs> if uh, you take a new guy up north it's a bit, bit of a different story right if you're going to head all the way over to Haida Gwaii you're kind of on the boat for a while. So that's a good place to start and uh, it was a learning curve for sure. <laughs> Took a long time to get that comfort level where you breathe slowly and you found you relaxed. That, that's what took. That's what takes time. Safety is very important to Buha, and it, it's regulated pretty well. All the divers that are coming on the boats have to have training. They have to go to school and get proper training and have all their tickets. You know, everybody on the boat has to have their medicals, has to have their training in O2 therapy, has to have their first aid training. And then the real training starts uh, on your first day of urchins, for sure. The school really doesn't prepare you for that entirely. It, it's, uh, no, it you've got to figure it out. Certification in the, the building certification blocks. Certification in the building to blocks. To start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you really have to be with someone that uh, is experienced and watch them and see how it works out. Because uh, when you drop in and a huge current, and you just see an urchin go whizzing by, you're like, oh, how is this? How does this work? <laughs> How do these get in the bag? <laughs> it's not easy. It's a lifestyle that uh, that you have to like. You know, money's not everything. I mean, you're in small boats, cramped quarters, and, and diving in in bad currents, and you know you have to know what you're doing. You just can't be a swimming pool diver. You know, you have to have your wits about yourself. And then I uh, heard that people made a living on the coast diving for seafood. So I came out here and then I've been here ever since. Safety for me, now that I'm a, especially a, an operator, yeah, it's like my, my main thing. Not so much when I was a diver because I always wasn't concerned. I was very comfortable underwater. I'm from Hannah, Alberta. I uh, lived in Euclid for the past 10 years. Uh, a lot of ups and downs, literally. <laughs> um, it's good, you just hit it hard for however long you want. Uh, this is my third month straight. And then uh, I take some time off, take a month off or something. And uh, yeah, you go hard and then, and then go home. Billy's really good, Billy. He's rocking it first year. What do you think there, Grant? Yeah, he's a champion for sure. Never quits. Yeah. Yeah, he's really good. I was doing gooey duck farming for a while there. A bunch of other jobs before that. Only been diving for just over two years now. Quickly. Better get in there then, I guess. Billy actually replaced me on the boat I was on last Christmas. And then he started up when I started my own boat this uh, summer. Uh, well, usually it's word of mouth. Yeah, the first couple of weeks were shocking, but it, you get used to it. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's right. Yeah. Uh, no matter what the economy is doing or whatever is going on, I've always had a job. Always. Once you become trained as an urchin diver, you're probably going to have a job for life. So you can't do it anymore. <laughs> It's not for everyone though, it's not easy. Skipper's responsibility is to take care of the boat. Everybody knows the boat. You go over stuff with them, you know, everybody knows where the fire extinguishers are. They know how to pump out the boats. They should be taught how to handle the boat a little bit in case something happens so everybody can take the wheel and maneuver the boat. The skipper is uh, in charge of we, you have safety. to trust him, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
and the tender's responsibility is when the diver's in the water, he's the one who goes, picks up the diver, picks up the product. And so he has to have good training on how to run a boat and know how to handle himself in a boat. You have to have somebody that you can trust 100% with your life, that you're always there for them. Being a three-man crew, you do need to uh, get along yeah. and not, yeah, yeah. not be angry in situations, keep a cool head. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you should go ahead and survey at this point, Start looking for a product. And you know, we do procedures every day over the boat, where we're going to dive, and, and if it's furry, we're going to a place where it's heavy current or lots of kelp, make sure that everybody's aware and the tender's aware. And I even have plans with the tender is like, yes, I'll be coming up in about 15 minutes right in a certain area and stuff. So we plan our stuff pretty well, you know, there's always unpredictability. But sometimes the currents are so strong here that the, yeah. like the, you can look away for a second. Look what happened to my bag today. What about, what about talking before we go in? Like sometimes we do a little powwow and this morning we did a little one, like the tides ripping this, this way. We've got a big ebb tide for another hour. So radar knows exactly because we've been working together for four years now. He knows where I'm going to come up. And if I know that I'm getting like really tossed down the, down the beach that I just come up anyways, because I don't want to be too far away. And yeah. uh, he, he knows to a T, you saw it today, every time I came up, he was right there, so. You know, it's a great career. It certainly is a lot of hard work, but it's something that gets in your blood. All of our guys are in love with the ocean and they're out there, not only just because they can make a living, but because they just love the adventure and the lifestyle but it can be very tough and it can be very frightening at some times. I mean, they're, where the sea urchins are is in the exposed outer coast. So you've got weather, you've got tides, you've got waves. It's a very difficult environment to work in. And these guys work uh, all through the day in some of the nastiest weather and sea conditions. And they do it very safely. They're highly trained, they're highly skilled.